Every cycle, we see a new wave of supposed blockchain killers. Last cycle, Solana was called the Ethereum killer, and now a new wave of blockchains have emerged to be Solana killers instead, one of which being Sweet. Both are built for speed and introduce new tech to outpace other blockchains. Both have also been criticized for their ties with VCs. The people who criticize Solana for being a VC coin. Which raises concerns around their launch tokenomics and centralization. So how do the two chains compare? Solana, founded by Anatoly Yakovenko, has been around since 2020 and is somewhat of a staple in the space. Meanwhile, Sui has its roots in Meta's failed Diem project, whose engineers decided to start fresh with Mistin Labs, launching Sui in 2023. From the start, both projects were heavily backed by VCs. Solana raised 319 million, while Sui raised 336 million from firms like A16Z, Multicoin Capital and FTX before the collapse. Let's get into its tech. At a high level, both can process transactions in parallel, unlike Ethereum, but how they do it is completely different. Solana is known for its unique proof of history mechanism, which timestamps transactions before they are added to the blockchain. So validators already know the exact order of transactions without needing to communicate with each other, allowing for some parallel transaction processing. For Sui, one of the main unique selling points is its object-based model versus the traditional account account-based model on Solana or Ethereum. In an account-based system, transactions modify account balances. If multiple transactions interact with the same account, bottlenecks can occur as they must be processed one at a time to prevent conflicts. In contrast, Sui's object-centric model treats assets like tokens and NFTs as separate objects. Because each object is independent, transactions that don't interact with the same object can be processed at the same time. We go more in depth on the tech in our Sui explainer, so we'll spare you the details here, but the point is that the object-centric model supposedly allows even higher scalability. Sui's theoretical maximum TPS stands at 297K compared to Solana's 65k. Meanwhile, it takes up to 12 seconds for transactions to finalize on Solana, while for Sui, it's just 400 milliseconds, thanks to a recent upgrade that we'll touch on in a bit. However, in real world usage, Solana seems to lead, processing an average of 1,053 TPS daily, while Sui follows closely behind at 854 TPS. Sui's unique object-based model is also related to how it is programmed. While Solana uses Rust, Sui uses its own iteration of Move, which itself was a language originally developed for Diem. The key difference is that Rust is a general purpose language, while Move was built specifically for blockchain development. This supposedly gives it other advantages, such as being optimized for high throughput, while also being less prone to bugs. Interestingly, Move is actually based on Rust, which means Solana developers can probably transition to Sui pretty easily. Speaking of which, Solana currently has a much larger developer community with over 3,000 monthly active developers, while Sui has around 800. And the gap might even grow bigger, considering that last year, Solana had the highest developer growth in the entire blockchain space, pulling over 7,400 new developers, more than even Ethereum. But an interesting survey from Blockworks found that Sui ties with Base as the blockchain that Solana developers would most like to build on, aside from Solana, of course. Developers on both networks have been hard at work pushing upgrades. One of the most anticipated upgrades for Solana is Fire Dancer, an independent validator client being developed by Jump Crypto. Clients are basically the software that validators run to process transactions and secure the network. If a blockchain only relies on a single client or doesn't have variety, it creates a major risk because if that client has a bug or goes offline, 
the entire network can be affected. Currently, Ethereum and Solana are the only blockchains which have multiple client implementations. As a plus, once fully implemented, Fire Dancer could boost Solana's throughput because during tests, it managed to clock in over 1 million transactions per second. It's already live on Solana's testnet and is expected to hit mainnet this year. Sui is also rolling out major upgrades. The transaction finality that we briefly touched on was the result of one of its biggest upgrades, Mr. Seti. Then there's also Sui's fully on-chain storage system called Walrus. There are other Sui upgrades in the works, but we won't get into all of them here. If you want a full breakdown, check out our dedicated video on it after this. Now, when it comes to tokenomics, Sol and Sui serve similar functions. They're used for transaction fees, staking, and eventually governance. But their supply structures are different. Solana has no fixed supply cap. It had an initial supply of 500 million Sol, but now stands at 595 million because of inflation from staking rewards. It releases about 4.5% new tokens tokens annually, which decreases gradually until it reaches 1.5%. Solana burns 50% of Sol from every transaction fee to offset inflation. Sui also launched with an initial circulating supply of 500 million tokens, but has a fixed total supply of 10 billion tokens. Right now, around 30% of Sui is in circulation, with the rest meant to release gradually over time. The exact inflation rate is unclear, but seems quite high. As for distribution, Solana initially allocated 37 7% of Sol to investors, 25% to the team and foundation, and 38% to community incentives and ecosystem development. Sui, on the other hand, had 20% allocated for early contributors, 14% to investors, 10% to the treasury, 6% for the community access program and app testers, and the remaining 50% allocated to the community reserve. Concerns around Sol's aggressive online schedule back in 2021 didn't stop Sol from becoming one of the top performing tokens of the previous bull run. Whether Sui will follow in its footsteps remains to be seen. The past year has been huge for both Solana and Sui in terms of adoption and ecosystem growth. Both chains saw a TVL surge thanks to the bullish market at the time, which drove interest and market activity. Solana is now the number two chain by TVL and Sui is in the top 10 but the recent market downturn could slow or reverse a lot of these gains. TVL aside, Sui also integrated with Phantom, one of the most popular multi-chain wallets. Now, Phantom has long been the go-to wallet for Solana users, and now it's making Sui more accessible to the same audience, which could add a new layer of competition between the two. Both networks are also indirectly competing in the hardware space, each pushing its own dedicated Web3 device. So Solana took the lead with the launch of the Saga Phone, a crypto-first smartphone designed for seamless Web3 interactions. Saga was released in 2023, but demand was low until the promise of a bonk airdrop caused sales to surge. Recently, Seeker was announced, Solana's next generation Web3 phone. Seeker is priced at $500 and is set to launch this year. Sui, on the other hand, is targeting the Web3 gaming market with its Sui Play OX one. The Sui Play OX1 is already taking pre-orders at $599 and is set to ship this year as Sui's big bet on capturing the Web3 gaming market. However, both projects also have their fair share of challenges. Both chains are criticized for being centralized. Another concern by the community is that Solana is centralized. Whether due to their lower validator count or higher barrier to become one, though you could argue that decentralization is not their highest priority as they were both built for speed. Solana has 1300 validators compared to Sui's 100, while Ethereum has about two to three K full nodes. The increasing client diversity on Solana is a good sign that networks can decentralize over time. And this would also help with the network outages that Solana used to be infamous for in 2022, though that problem seems to be resolving given that the last outage it saw was 
in February last year. SWE has also run into its own network issues. In November 2024, it went offline for two hours due to a bug that caused validators to crash, bringing all transactions to a halt. That said, the most pressing challenge faced by both networks may be on the sustainability of their adoption. For Solana, recent activity was largely driven by meme coins, while SWE seems to have seen some early success gaining traction as a gaming-oriented network. But if the markets go south, will interest and adoption be sustained? We've already seen how Solana's network activity dropped significantly when the meme coin hype died down, though it's worth noting that Solana has survived the previous bear market. So we'll have to see how the teams continue to build in the coming months, especially if the markets remain bearish. Looking ahead, both Solana and SWE have different strategies to increase adoption. For SWE, the primary focus is through Web3 Gaming. With its fast transactions, low fees, and the upcoming SWE Play OX1 gaming handheld, SWE is making a big push to establish itself as the go-to blockchain for gaming. Meanwhile, Solana has broader ambitions. Co-founder Raj has said that Solana is aiming to onboard large institutions and integrate more deeply into global finance. So which blockchain has more potential? Let us know what you think in the comments below. All right, bye.